Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the Rocket Wide by Channel Island Surfboards. Now as you can see, I have two boards. They're both stock 5.5. Five. I have one with FCS 2 plugs, one with Futures, and I'm super excited to break down this model. So get your favorite drink, sit back, and enjoy the show. Well guys, summertime's here, we need a good groveler, and if you follow the show, you know I'm a huge fan of all the new constructions coming out, right? EPS is very alive feeling under your feet, it has great spring and pop in and out of turns, and it's more buoyant, so you're gonna get a little extra paddle out of an EPS foam core. Now these two boards right here are spine tech. This is something new that CI is doing. I really like it. They've partnered with a company out of Australia. They're called Shapers, and they came out with this little piece right here. This is the spine of the board. They've routed the deck, and an EPS expanded polystyrene foam has a lot of flex in itself, right? And so what they're trying to do is, by routing that and laying this spine in here, this is actually stiffening up the board and manipulating that flex for this board to flex and go back to its state quickly, and when it pops back, it's springing you in and out of turns. Now, I mentioned the liveliness you get out of the new constructions, EPS foam core, but we've also got to talk about durability, right? I've ridden both these spine techs a bunch. So pressure dents are lighter. Remember, we're surfing small waves, one to three foot. We have to generate our own speed, so we're pushing really hard on the deck. Now, if I could give this a scale of one to 10, I would say this is about an eight out of 10. A PU, I say a six out of 10. So more pressure dents and a little bit deeper on the pressure dents with the PU. I also want to mention that the EPS foam core is going to give us better buoyancy, and I like to say that it's about a half a liter more. So we're going to get better paddling, more spring in and out of turns, and better durability. This is a must in our small one to three foot gravelers. Let's talk about where the Rocket Wide came from. The original model is called the Rocket 9, which is a pro model between Dan Godowskis in collaboration with CI looking for that daily driver that fits in the three to six foot surf. So Dane wanted to make that small wave groveler to fit in the one to three foot category, and he came up with the Rocket Wide. So some of the changes that I really like a lot is they've given it more width in the nose and more width in the tail. As we get more width up here, there's gonna be more hidden foam, more surface area, that's gonna help my paddling, right? Which is vital in small waves. And then a wider tail is gonna give us more surface area, which is gonna create more lift and give me more speed down the line. And it's really gonna help me get through flat spots. And that's exactly how it felt on my feet. This board's really fast. But I wanna talk about how they did it so subtle, right? It's not super wide here. It's only 18 and three quarters. So the board's still responsive. And a lot of people are already asking me, how does it compare to the pod mod or the high five or the mini? And you know what? What I like is, it's not, it, even though it has a hybrid nose, it's not super wide and there's not a ton of foam up here. What happens with boards like that is I feel like it, it really messes with the swing weight. So when I want the board to pivot, I feel like those boards that have a lot of foam up here, that it kind of dictates on how the board turns and it feels more top heavy. And the only way to get rid of that is to go shorter. So my pod mod was a 5.2, this is 5.5. What's that gonna do? That extra length is gonna give me more rail in the water and it's gonna help me to get it to serve more like a high performance small wave board as opposed to a groveler. And that's one thing that I absolutely loved about this board and that it suits my style of surfing. It'll cruise, it'll carve, and it'll do everything really fast, but then in one foot surf, I can still surf it in the pocket and get it to do what I wanna do. Now looking at the rocker and concave on this board, it's pretty similar to the Rocket 9. We have a low entry rocker to a staged rocker, so it's really fast down the line, and then we have a medium exit rocker out the tail, and that's coupled with a pretty aggressive single concave here, then a double between the fins with a slight V out the back. 
This board's quick. I really like a double between the fins at times. It really keeps it easy to go rail to rail, enhanced by that little slight V out the tail. And then swallowtails, you can get a lot of surface area in a swallowtail, and that's what they did to give it that maximum speed down the line. And then each point on the swallow helps get traction as I go from one rail, that one side of the swallow is engaged, it releases and it gets me on the other side. So I really feel like this board in one to three foot surf, it's probably the best I've ever ridden. Now I just made a pretty bold statement. I said best groveler one to three foot surf ever. We've got to talk about that before we look at some waves together. One of the things that I noticed in the footage is how this board goes in the pocket in one to two foot surf with incredible flow. And what I mean by flow is bottom turn, top turn, right into a bottom turn with no hesitation to go back in the pocket again. So there's no two stage bottom turns. And if it happens, it's rare. And those two stage bottom turns are to gain more speed or adjust to where I want to hit the lip or do a carve. And I didn't feel that. So what does that mean? This board's giving me the speed that I'm looking for in and out of turns with no hit, no hitches or hesitations. So I noticed that about this board and I really liked it, number one. Number two, I also like that it's 5.5. Five. So I've got some rail line in the water to work with as opposed to like, let's say the pod mod at 5.2. Pod mod's a great board, super fun. But with it being so short, it was really hard for me to go back to a regular high performance shortboard at 5.9. It messes with my stance a bit. And when I'm on it for a week or two, I know that when swell comes in, the transition is gonna be hard for me. So this board is setting the bar now for one to three foot grovelers in pocket surfing and flow. So now I wanna talk about the fins I chose using the FCS2 system. I really like this board as a thruster and I started it with the Clohan handing a large. I like it, it's performance core, so there's good consistency and flex and I'm really gonna be able to fill the board out. What I like about this particular fin is it's not too much sweep and it's not too upright, it's right in the middle. So this is a great fin. I also like the AM2s. Now, the other thing I did was I remember the Rocket 9 really liked the two plus one setup. So these are the Merrick Twin fins. They're really upright, so they pivot fast. And this little small trailer right here is gonna give me good traction. And that this is also a fun set and when the waves get small, it keeps the board real playful. Now, some of you guys out there have the Mark Richards. This has a little bit more sweep. This is super fast fin. I liked it, but not as much as the upright fin here. This was a better combination. Now I wanna talk about the fins I tested in the Futures fin setup. Since we're riding a CI, I thought it'd be appropriate to use the AM2 template. Now this doesn't look like an AM2 because this is a prototype. This is the AM2 that you're used to seeing in Honeycomb. Well, this is a brand new construction. Futures is calling it the Beta Series in Vapor Core technology. What's unique about this fin is they're doing a full ultralight carbon layup. So this is a really light fin. It has a hollow core and it's a speed generating fin. And the right number is gonna come in around an eight. But what I really like is that this has the flat foil in which this AM2 has. And it's the only speed generating fin that doesn't come with the V2 foil that you'd see in like the Jack Freestone. Remember they have, the V2 has a little bit of concave in there. So this has the flat foil and the weight, this fin is so light, it's definitely noticeable compared to the Jack Freestone, which is light in itself. So I started testing with this fin and I couldn't believe the speed I was getting in and out of turns and projection down the line. So I got a chance to talk to the folks at Futures and I said, look, I really like this rocket wide and I would love to have the prototype fin. When are you guys launching it? And they said, it's still in its prototype stages. We'd like to do a little test, maybe let you put it in the review and talk about it. And they want to put it on the website. They're going to make a couple hundred sets and allow the first people to buy to be a part of that prototype testing also. I think it's really special that you get to be where I'm at and they honestly want your feedback. This fin for me is next level in small waves with flex. I really like them. Now I didn't just test there. I also ran the Jack Freestone generation speed generating with the V2 foil. These feel great. They're a little bit less rake or sweep 
and so it's a little bit more neutral and I felt like I could get it vertical maybe a tad faster and that's how it felt. So to be honest with you, I just tried these two sets. I really messed around a lot with a prototype. I enjoyed them, I think you guys will too. So get involved and be a part of their program. So let's look at some waves together. Here's a little wave. I come off the bottom delaying, but all of a sudden it got all this speed. Nothing special, but those prototype fins got a lot of drive on them. Same fins, board feels great, a lot of spring. This is what I'm talking about when a board feels alive and a quick wrap in a one foot section, that's hard for me to do. Here it is. This is the Merrick Twin Fins 2 plus 1 setup. Board just has great flow and it turns so fast. I love it. It's really playful. Here it is, the flow. That turn right into a bottom turn into a foam climb. That felt great. Here's a one foot wave. Board is going rail to rail in the pocket really easy. Now this one, here's that quick cutty right in the pocket. Like I said, that's usually hard for me to do. Look at the bottom turn. Just so easy for me. And then this roundhouse, quick rebound, so fun. Now one place that I struggled with this board was when we started putting it in a little bit bigger surf, right? We had a really fun day, it was three to four. And I just felt like the board was really sticky on the bottom turns. So maybe not enough rail line to work with, but as, as the wave go on, they would taper down and the board would start to light up and have good flow again. So for me, it's really a great one to three foot graveler and I think that's the way CI designed it to be. Will it go in the three to four? I will, but I don't think it's ideal. That's when I'd switch into maybe like an OG flyer or the fever. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Rocket Wide. This is my top pick so far for 2018 for gravelers and one to three foot surf. Special shout out thanks to CI for sending these boards down for review. Hey, look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can find us at surfandshow.com or on Instagram at surfandshow. That's it for today. We'll see you in the water. Bye-bye. I believe in paper airplanes. I can find my worth. I can find my own. Suffer it up like the worst It's bringing me down, 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 down